Hi folks, my knife here. Welcome back to uh, watching me as I attempt to work my way through Kerbal Space Program. This is the second episode. At the end of the previous episode, we got in some new technology. And a bunch of stuff here, but specifically the main thing I was interested in was the difference between this solid fuel booster and the one we start off with. Now, this one looks bigger. And, uh, filled with even with a new, even more volatile fuel. Okay, great. Uh, you can see it has a thrust of 315 and a mass of 7.875. This one is roughly half the mass and has less thrust, quite a bit less. So this guy should get off the ground a lot faster and should run for longer. So we should get higher. Now on this guy, I think we got up to around 16,000 feet or something like that. So... <clears throat> And we'll call him the 1L. He's the long edition of this thing. So let's just see how much better we do with a bigger... Oh, let's save him. Oops, no, I want to save him. There we go. So let's see how much better we do with the bigger uh, bigger booster. And while we're settling down... Now one thing... I noticed when I was reviewing the video from the previous episode is I had done this toggle torque button here and it didn't seem to do anything. But watching the video, I saw it was turning the reaction wheels on and off. So I hadn't realized, I hadn't <laughs> looked very carefully, I guess, to realize that we actually have some control. I thought the only control was the SAS thing and the RCS were the only controls. Oh, and I guess flaps later on when you get those, if, if, if we ever get them. So I didn't realize that even at this stage, we still have some control over the uh, craft's attitude. So that's interesting. I'll have to keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. We got that, that, that staging is great. I always forget about staging here. All right. Let's see how much better this guy does. All right. Bill is looking a little uh, uncertain about his situation here. Hey, Bill, you've lived through two flights. That's infinitely more than Jebediah did. Well, that's two more than Jebediah did, but as a multiple, you are an infinite number of times more successful than Jebediah. So, hey, sit back, enjoy the ride. Do you want EVA on the way up? No, I don't think you do. Okay, do I need to steer here? Actually, if it tilts... Actually, if we get it to tilt a little bit in that direction, that would be good. Because maybe we land beyond the space center. And maybe then we, when we do uh, soil samples now, we might get something new. Who knows? Okay. Oh, blow that off. Well, we're almost at 16,000 already, so let's see how much higher we're going to get here. Uh, ooh, we've got to zoom in here. How high are we going to get here? Oh, 34,000, so, well, 20. Why would it be changing? Drag? Maybe it's due to drag? Okay, I could believe that. So in theory, if we ever get out of the atmosphere, then the apoapsis should be stable, as long as we're not accelerating. But anyway, 33,000. Yeah, that's like... Oops, no, I want this one here. That's double what we got to on the single booster. So that's that's cool. Oh, I get to... Uh, well, first let's do a goo observation. Ta-da! Yay! Let's get a crew report. Yay, more science! And, oh, while I'm here, let's... Uh, I'm just playing with the reaction wheel, or with whatever control I have here. Sorry, Jeb, I'm just trying to work out... Oops, I think I'm making things worse for you here. 
Oops, didn't want that. Clearly, I need to go back to that tutorial and study a bit better how you, uh, how we go about doing this. How we control this thing. Okay, I just want to uh, get through the hot re-entry part. Oh, I hope that's not going to... Oh, you're starting to stabilize? That's good. Oh, I guess we didn't get up high enough for a hot re-entry. Okay, well, let's give you a parachute then. Let's see if he cheers up once the parachute is deployed. No, he's still concerned. I guess he didn't like the roller coaster ride on the way down. Let's get this out of the way. Ooh, I think we're going to land... Oh, yeah, we're going to land not very far, but just beyond the Space Center. Okay. Oh, should we do observe the, some more goo? Yeah, let's observe some more goo. Okay. Yeah, see, he's happy now. Once once the parachute actually unfolds, he's happy. I mean, I can understand that. Me too. But Bill, you're going to see some new lands. The lands beyond the Space Center by a couple of kilometers. Hmm. Baby steps, Bill. Baby steps. You know, you're the first Kerbal to survive travel into space. And from the looks of things, you're the first Kerbal to travel beyond the space center too. <laughs> so I don't see any roads or villages or any other sign of habitation. So Kerbals exist solely for space science. Everyone on Kerbal is a rocket scientist of some kind or another. That must make for interesting conversations in bars. And there you are, gently on the ground. Okay, so I already got a crew report from you, right? Right, okay, so then all that's left here is EVA time. Oh, come on, Bill. You can let go. There you go. That's right, get away from there a bit. And now let's do your stuff. Let's plant a flag. Ta-da! You claimed this part of Kerbal in the name of Kerbal. Wow, you're the first Kerbal to travel beyond the Space Center. Be proud, Bill. Stand tall. Oh, sorry. Oh, didn't mean to make fun of your height. Okay, we got a sample. We do an EVA report. Hmm... Well, it's the same EVA report as before, but we still get science for it. Cool. I wonder if that's just because we're in a different place, or do you always get science from EVA reports? Grab on. Hmm. Ah, there we go. Bored. There we go. That got on board. Yeah, something I noticed. Um, I've tried. I have tried recording this episode once before, but I screwed up the audio, so I'd redo it. And one thing I noticed is if I recover the vessel when Bill's outside, still outside of it, then it doesn't actually seem to recover the vessel. I mean, I go back to mission control and everything, but I don't get my science. And if I go to the tracking station, the vessel is still out there. And then I can recover it and I get the science. Like that happened in the last episode and it was confusing to me. So I'm not sure whether that's a bug or when he's out there, am I actually recovering him when I come up here? So if anybody knows that, uh, and you could uh, drop a note in a comment or something like that, that would be helpful. But this should get us, if I'm right, this should get us our science. Yep. Yeah, this gets us all our science. 22. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, not much for recovering the vessel. Oh, we got no science at all for 
Okay, so the second... Okay, the second goo observation I made was no science at all. We did pretty good with everyone else. All right. Okay, uh, we're not going to bother doing any research because I want to try something else first. So we got up to like 33,000 feet with the Goo Explorer 1L. What I would like to know, actually, yeah, I can just do it here again. Is this... How much better or worse if I use two of these stages? Okay. So their thrust is lower than the big guy. I should make sure I'm doing this right. These guys can go off together. So we do him first. At the same time we pop him, he goes off. Then we pop him, then we do him. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> so we know that the thrust of these smaller engines is significantly less than the big boy. But we do have the advantage that since there's multiple stages, we can drop we drop a bunch of weight halfway through. So that'll be an improvement. So it'll be interesting to see whether it performs better or worse. Cast your bets now. And they're off. Okay. fairly well. Using up that solid fuel like there's no tomorrow. Boom. Oops. There we go. Looked like it was leaning a bit too much to me. through the fuel. And there you go. Hmm. Wonder why it tumbles. Just aerodynamic. Maybe I should leave it on until he's higher. Maybe then he wouldn't tumble as much. Ooh, I think I actually corrected for that. Ho 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 ho! Am I not awesome? Oh, look at that. Woohoo, I just randomly hit a button there. Okay, let's see how high this guy's gonna get. Looks like he's actually gonna get a bit higher. Holy shit, not just a bit higher. He's going up to like 87,000. That's in space, isn't it? I think space is like 70,000 in this game. Which is a little unrealistic, but hey. Awesome. Yeah, be excited, Bill. First Kerbal to actually be into space? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard people talk about that music. Awesome. Cool. And how high are we going to get up? 80-something, right? So let's get up near the top, and then we'll observe the goo. Okay, observe Mr. Goo. Oh, that's a new report. At least 10 science. Cool. Okay. Oh, let's get your crew report up here. Five science for that. And why don't you go on an EVA while we're at it? Awesome. Get your EVA report. Eight science for that. And I'll get back on board before anything happens to you. <laughs> now, do I get the option to reset? Yeah, I can reset the goo canister. So, if I observe this guy... 
10 science. Now, is that 10 science in addition to what the other caster had? I don't think so. Well, Compton's sphere also appears to become brittle. That's actually different. Okay, no, we'll keep that then. That's different data from what the other one was. Yeah, awesome, Abel. So where are you going? To, where are you coming down? You come down in land or water? Ah, good. You're coming down the land. Ooh, you're coming down like really. Oh, interesting. Oh, well, you're going to come down in the mountains. Oh, I hope that doesn't cause a problem. <laughs> Oops, want this other one here. There we go. All right, let's speed things up here now. Get you through the hot re-entry phase, and then we can launch your parachute. I do like the way this capsule more or less self-writes. Okay, let's get that parachute out. Since we're in the mountains, I don't know what uh, the surface level is here. I don't know how high the surface rises here. But hopefully the parachute will know when to deploy. Like when to fill out. There we go. Yeah, so the parachute just seems to automatically know when it's a certain height above the surface. Yeah, here we come in. Things looking good, eh, Bill? So if we do another EVA, am I only allowed one EVA report per uh, permission or not? That'd be silly, no, I mean, because if you do multiple EBAs, you should be able to get, you know, more science. You're doing more stuff. Yeah, get excited, Bill. You survived another one. Let's see how long you're going to be with us. There is no retirement for Kerpel astronauts. There's only service and then death. And you get to continue your service. Cool. Um, crew report we've already got. Oh, that's everything. From there, okay, so I guess there's just the EVA to be done. Whee! Let go, Bill. Yeah, get far enough away. You can do the flag planting ceremony. And this is actually kind of like worthwhile, this one. I mean, we're, we're, we're somewhere. We're, um, um, whoops. Need to click here first. Uh, in, oh God, can't type. In the mountains. I know, I have such stirring, uh, <clears throat> stirring plaques. I say, take your surface sample. Groundbreaking or not, it's science. That's all I care about. Get your EVA report in. It's more science. And now, Bill, get back on board that ship. And let's recover you and see how you do. See how we did. Drum roll. 44.7 science. Oh, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so the goose that I did. 10 science. And the second goo was 2.3 science. Okay. No, they were both in space near Kerbin. Okay. Huh, cool. All right. Well, what are we going to do with 73 science? So this guy is 45, so we could afford him. This guy is also 45. He needs stability, though. So we should buy stability. Let's let's do that. 
So now we could buy him if we want to, but let's see. This new guy we have here is Flight Control. Well, so far I haven't had too much trouble with that. Uh, but he requires survivability anyway. So the only problem is... If I do him, I won't be able to afford any of these guys. But do I really need... I, I've got so much stuff I haven't played with yet already. Strut connector... A generator... Use your operating capacity to significantly increase the stability, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it's a launch stability. So it's basically like a, yeah, a gantry or something like that. A radial decoupler and a tricoupler. No, I haven't even started playing with uh, liquid engines yet. Winglet. A cockpit. That looks, it doesn't, well, uh, stay put, like, oh, oh, with that one we could start building uh, unmanned stuff. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh, but that's the one that needs survivability. All right, let's go with the survivability then. Cool. So, well, what's this guy here? Oh, and then we get batteries. And Science Junior, oh, that'll get us more science. And, oh yeah, I haven't used any of the uh, transmitters yet, but I guess as long as I bring my capsules back alive, that's fine. If I was going to, though, put up, a, say, a permanently orbiting satellite, then I, get, then, then I would meet, need to make use of the antennas, I assume. But anyway, so that all looks cool, and that probably is good enough for this episode. Thank you for joining me on this episode, and I uh, hope to see you back for the next one.